Uh, here we are today on the second of the Selenium conference with the lightning talks and with the person who needs no introduction, Mr. Naresh Jain is here. And without any delay, I hand it over to you, Naresh. Thanks, uh, Subhash, uh, for the introductions. And uh, wow, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a bit early on a Saturday, so I appreciate <laughs> everyone uh, coming in on time. I see a huge number of people coming in and quite excited about uh, hosting the lightning talks. Uh, lightning talks are quite special, uh, at least for me and a lot of people in the Selenium community. Uh, we've seen some fantastic uh, projects actually come out of uh, out of the lightning talks and i'm hoping today uh, we would have something similar where we would be able to uh, see some fantastic lightning talks uh, leading to some fantastic projects from there um, we have a uh, so the the process of uh, getting people to present the lightning talks generally when we do an in person conference we just have a board uh, a whiteboard where people go sign up and then they just kind of uh, line up during the lightning talks and then go through it uh, because this is virtual, we wanted to try and, uh, you know, keep it a little bit, uh, a li little bit of prep is done. So we announced, uh, you know, the people to submit lightning talks uh, and we got quite a few people who submitted lightning talks out of which we have selected a subset. Uh, about eight people are uh, selected. So, uh, you know, they will go first. And then if we have time, uh, we will be uh, taking more people uh, live impromptu. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, you know, so I'm just going to quickly run through, uh, uh, just give a little bit of a background and then uh, run through some of the rules of uh, what we're going to be doing in this lightning talks. Lightning talks are essentially three minutes crisp, uh, like power packed. Uh, talks where uh, people share some ideas. These are very raw ideas in some sense. So uh, it's it's a power pack three minute uh, kind of an idea presentation. Uh, and we are hoping that this will spark some some ideas in your head and something interesting will come out of it. Uh, you know, this is also a great opportunity for people who are first time speakers or who have not presented before to uh, get on the stage and do something. So it's, it's a way of uh, basically also creating new speakers for us. Uh, and like I was saying, uh, you know, a lot of times we've seen that uh, lightning talks lead to interesting ideas and from there interesting projects come out. Uh, so just as a case in time, uh, you guys know Dan, uh, who is uh, the co-creator of the Appium project uh, in this uh, during the Selenium conference 2022 in London. Uh, you know, Dan was presenting about uh, what he had done, the automation he had done around iOS uh, using similar syntax like Selenium. Uh, using again a uh, page object pattern and stuff like that and uh, you know some of the people who saw that they suggested why don't why don't uh, why don't Dan give a, a, a lightning talk uh, which our own uh, Jason Huggins uh, who is the co-creator of Selenium uh, was hosting and uh, you know Dan of course had some technical difficulties but then was able to uh, present his lightning talk uh, and he was uh, he he was asking if anyone is interested in contributing uh, you know three minutes or five minutes later everything was over and uh, you know Dan thought that's the end of it right nobody's reached out but of course Jason reached out to him they kind of then uh, worked together and that's what led to the Appium project right and I'm sure like this there are many other stories that if you uh, look at the list that Manoj and uh, Diego shared yesterday many other projects actually got inspired and came out of uh, such things uh, so that is why lightning talks are very special for uh, this open source testing community and uh, we we try to make it a point to have like a dedicated keynote type uh, session for uh, for folks so today we have uh, like i said earlier we have eight people that have been shortlisted uh, and we will give the, each of them 3 minutes to present their lightning talks uh, what i'm going to do next is i'm going to go through uh, and invite uh, each person uh, you know who's been shortlisted they have already been communicated so the order again that i'm going through is is a bit random it's basically based on when uh, it's like a first come first thing so whoever submitted the first uh, and got selected i'm 
I'm just going to read out their name. So can I please have Argo uh, from Indonesia uh, who wants to talk about HAR uh, utility, uh, the HAR utility in Selenium 4. So you're going to do the inauguration, Argo. Uh, I hope I'm yeah. pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, and I'm going to set the timer for three minutes. Uh, hope you're ready. Uh, you can share your screen and uh, we can go from there. So I'm starting your timer oh, for three yeah. minutes, Argo. I'll give you a time check at uh, two minutes, uh, 30, 30 seconds, the uh, last 30 seconds, and then we go from there. All right. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Thank you. So hi, everyone. Uh, I am Argo from Bibli.com. Today, I will share about the hard utility in the Selenium 4. So the motivation when we are creating this one is when we are doing some like uh, automation, sometimes this uh, like blank spec yeah, happen, yeah. but we don't know uh, where is this coming from. Usually, if you are running it manually, you will uh, use, uh, use the inspect element in your browser and then go to the tab network. And then you can save it, the files, and then you can analyze in the future. The files that you have saved from this Windows is called the whole hard files. So uh, if we are opening the hard files, it's like a JSON uh, file, yeah? So we see the possibility for writing a utils to recreate the hard files and FOILA. This is introducing the hard file. So what is actually the hard files? Uh, as we know, we have a Selenium 4 that feature connected to the CDP. So we create some perfecting between the Selenium CDP request and respond, and then write it to this. So the concept itself is, from the Selenium 4, we intercept the network traffic, and then uh, we'll be uh, on the HAR utils. We will mapping the uh, request and respond to the HAR format. And then after that, we're writing to this, and then you will get the some file.har, and then you can use it for the further analysis in your browser or in your HAR viewer uh, tools. Yeah. Actually, our tools is already online, so you can try it by put the dependency and also for the repository at your uh, network listener for the, uh, your driver, and also uh, where is your specify your hard file. And then you can run your automations as usual. And after that, if you want to uh, write hard to this, you can call the uh, method for the creating the hard. And after that, you will see the hard file in your uh, project folder. Yeah. So what is the lesson learned that we get during this research? First thing is not all data inside the hard is access in the current Selenium API. So we need some like uh, work around for uh, getting the data that we want. And then in the previous Selenium version, we found that uh, bug that uh, not complete yet for the HTTP method, for example, post, get, and pass, and et cetera. But in the current Selenium, it is already uh, fixed yet. So if you want to try the hard util, you can scan our QR code or you go to the GitHub page. And then you can contact me via LinkedIn or email. And I'm Argo Drito, STT from Blibli.com. Back to you, Naresh. Wow, awesome. That was uh, perfectly timed, uh, Argo. And, and I think you finished uh, well before your time, actually, uh, okay. which is fantastic. Uh, again, if uh, people are interested in uh, getting more details about this, maybe, uh, you know, yeah, I think uh, someone's asking, please share the link for the HAR utility. Hari utils. So if you can just put it on the chat, uh, that'll be great. Thanks, Argo. Uh, wonderful uh, talk. And uh, I'm going to move to the next uh, speaker now. Uh, so the next speaker we have here is uh, Vaibhav, Vaibhav Sukla. So Vaibhav is going to be talking about uh, testing coverage with regards to application code. So hello everyone. My name is Vavo. I am working as an automation engineer into the new private limited Noida India. So today we will talk about uh, testing coverage with respect to application code. As you know, uh, uh, in general scenario, when we are doing the testing, we don't know how much testing we are doing uh, in respect of application code, how much we are covering the application code. So there is no use to do the manual testing or automation testing in respective of if you don't know what is the exit or entry criteria. So this is the new tool uh, which is developed by the EPAM. So we can uh, use this tool and we can come to know how much code we are covering. Because in general, when we are doing the automation, we don't do, don't do the monkey testing or ad hoc testing. So today we will cover the introduction, solution, tag stacks and how it does work and 
deploy how drill force is the tool name and the demo so let's start without wasting the time as you know application code is an important parameter to know the testing coverage we might be having tons of test cases but we don't know we are covering the 100 percent of application or don't so when we are doing the unit testing using the sonar cube or jcoco it provides good coverage but there's a dependency that developer has to write the unit test so when we are uh, come to testing point of view so there is a drill for a tool which we can use without uh, dependency on the unit test so drill force is a tool for real time application profiling it does not mapping test case and does not hand dependency on the unit test and it does not affect the application code also we don't have any dependency on the application code so tech stack if you talk about it has the type script kotlin uh, if you talk about backend admin stat watcher and if you talk about front end it's uh, using the ui and some apis so we are uh, showing the without wasting the time i can show the demo how it goes so there is a manual testing uh, browser extension of drill 4j so which we can set up on our local as you can see on my browser extension there is a drill 4j browser extension so i need to add you need to add this in your extension and once you start uh, adding this and there is a deployment uh, this is the uh, my drill 4j which we can deploy uh, with the help of docker image so this is the docker image from this we can deploy drill 4j admin portal on your server or on your local so currently it's running on my server so you can see this is that drill 4j admin and here we have uh, here we have the multiple projects so i am going to give a demo uh, i'm using the demo application for this so this is my application uh, so I will start doing the manual testing and we can see how much uh, code coverage is going. So you can see these are the test uh, when we coming to build methods, these are the classes or the methods which is uh, developed by the developer. So these are the application code and you uh, we don't have the access, just we can see what are the classes and what are the packages. So you can see these are the classes and packages. Now I will start my manual testing and we can show how much coverage is going. What are the different classes and methods we are covering in this uh, uh, manual testing? So let's let's start. So have a quick time check. You're done with your three minutes. I'm giving you a thirty second grace. Uh, yeah. Please. So I'm giving the demo. Uh, I'm giving my uh, manual test case name. I am starting the test. So I'm giving the username. Any username we can give. Uh, one two three. This is a demo application. So you can see uh, our test case is started and we can see on this here also it's running. So we can submit. Uh, we are performing the some action on uh, our UI on application. It can be uh, run with the backend also or in uh, front end also. So you can see 7.3% is covered. So I'm stopping my manual testing here. And I'm stopping the finish scope over here also. I'm stopping the manual testing. And now you can see I run a demo Selenium test just now, and it covers 20% of my application code, and it covers 21 methods also over here. So these are the type uh, how we can cover and how we can find what are the different classes and methods are covered. So you can see this is the controller class, which is 15.4% is covered, and this is the DTO 8.8% is covered. So this is a just an overview how we can use drill 4 j with the applicants code. So these are the agent or the how we can deploy our uh, drill 4 j and uh, dashboard. So it has a dashboard also which I showed. So that's much from my side. Any questions to you? Perfect. All right. Thanks, Vaibhav. Uh, this that was a good demo. Uh, I think uh, there is one question from the audience. Uh, okay. So. Mudit is asking if drill 4j needs to be deployed on the same server on which the application is deployed. No, it can be deployed on any server. It depend, no dependency with the application. It can be deployed in centralized and we can use multiple applications with that. Perfect. I'll take one last question from automation. How do we achieve code coverage using Docker? So we need to set up some configuration in our Docker file and we can do the automation code coverage also. Same way I showed manual testing. So well, just we need to add some dependency in our pom.xml file. 
All right, awesome. So I think uh, Weber, you could maybe share the links and other details in the chat. Uh, thanks again for your wonderful lightning talks. Thank you. The next person I have is Kanchan, uh, who's going to be talking about testing lessons from a nine month old. Hi, everyone. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes. Hi, Kanchan. Yes, you're audible Hi. and your video is visible. So I'm going to set again the timer for three minutes. I know you'd ask for a little bit more grace. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But I'm setting the timer for three minutes. Over to you, Kanchan. Okay. Thank you so much, Naresh. So hi, everyone. Good morning. I'm Kanchan Katare. I'm QV lead at Red Hat. And the topic of my presentation is testing lesson from my nine-month-old. So congratulations. You are going to be parents. It's been 18 months since we heard this, and our life has been changed ever since. A good change, a great change. This 18 months has been roller coaster so right so far, and we are loving every part of it. So like from nine months old, I learned this lesson. I just want to quick share with you. So first lesson I, I learned is testing is crucial. I had to go through this several layered out in a phases and this uh, nine month of span. This checks where to check the mother, the baby development and the mother health as well. Similarly, every projects need to be checked at regular interval at modular uh, stages to ensure building perfectly as expected. Testing at the right time and the right times will ensure a healthy chubby smiling project or a project owner, I can say. Second lesson I have learned is give everything its time. All that beautiful, lovable task take its own time to build and develop, just like baby take 40 weeks. So often we see project owner, developer, team lead uh, pushing for releases and expecting nothing less than perfect. What I learned here is give everything its time. Rome was not built in a day. I mean, even if it was, I'm sure testing took more days. But on a serious note, you could cannot expect testing to be done in one go. It requires round of testing and patience. Hurrying on to things will only let the bugs fall through the cracks. Lesson three, make your demands heard by the right people. When she is hungry, she knows whom to look out for. When she is sleepy, she knows whom to reach out to. Two important learnings I learned here is to find something. If you find something, have suggestion, need something, reach out to the, communicate it properly. This may include documenting it or filing a JIRA. So you are heard by the community. And second, ensure you are communicating your bugs to the right set of people to who, who can help to resolve to self, so, uh, solve your queries. Like UI related bugs have no place in the functional Jira board. Fourth lesson is upskill. From the first day till now, she is learning new skill every day. Like smiling to Google is now able to say mama, papa. Likewise, ensure you are adding new domain skill to your profile. Upgrade your older learning. Look out for the new updates. Like Selenium 4 is there. Selenium 5 will be coming in market. No point in crawling. You need to walk and then eventually run. Keep the learning curve growing. If you haven't had at least one line updated you in a profile in last three months, you are doing something wrong. Lesson five, build your network. When she was born, she would only cling on me. Eventually, she started knowing her papa, now other family members and the uh, neighbors also. For a professional, this is probably the most crucial learning. Always build your network. No matter what demo domain you work for, it will always benefit you. Networking will help you to know the newer technology, testing method, or a job referral. Let's be honest. The more friends you have, the more toys to play with. Lesson six, automate redundant tasks. So lullabies. Earlier, we used to sing to her. Trust me, it was tiring and time consuming. Eventually, we created a playlist on Alexa. It's now simply putting her in her cradle and asking Alexa to play. Similarly, use automation too for regular tasks. Focus more on automation. It will not only save the time, but keep your energy and of course reduces the manual error. Last lesson, plan the next one at the right time. She is only nine months old and we are already been pressurized to have another one. What I learned here to make sure there is sufficient time between the two releases. This will ensure you to get the time required to plan and process your project. Bite only what you can chew. So this is what I learned from my nine months old. And I will learn to uh, know your thoughts on these things. So please reach out to me if you have any thoughts on this. You can reach out to me at kkatare at redhat.com. Thank you so much. Awesome. Uh, that was very wonderfully put, uh, Kanchan. Thank you for that. Uh, we do have one question. So I'll quickly read out the question. Uh, <laughs> Uh, actually, it's not a question. It says, good one, Kanchan. Nice correlation with uh, baby with the testing practices. So Thank you so much. Uh, it's more of a... <laughs> uh, okay. 
All right. If uh, there are no more questions, then I'm going to uh, move to the next person. Uh, thanks again, Kanchan, for uh, bringing that correlation and uh, some of the lessons learned from parenting. Uh, so the next person we have is uh, Sudindra. So good morning, all. So today, like, I am just going to give you a quick demo on like how we automated both the backward mobile emulation flow in a single test and how we also achieved parallel testing for the same using BD framework. Okay. So before we start, right, so I want to give you an overview so that you can correlate the same with whatever application you are testing. Okay. So we are actually a website like where we actually have tax consultants who submit the taxes on behalf of their clients, send a link to the taxpayer who then signs it back and send it, send it back to the tax consultant who then submits it to the government. Okay. So here, right, so one of the problems that we had is that the link we, we introduced this new website and then the link that was sent to the taxpayer, right? So the taxpayer had an option to open the link on a mobile or a uh, laptop or a tablet, okay? So when they when they did this, right, so there were a lot of bugs coming out because like each one were using different configuration pro and the screen size was different, okay? And then we were all looking for a solution because one part of our flow is happening in browser, then, uh, but the client who is using our documents is using a mobile device or a laptop, right? So we don't, right? So uh, I'll just give you a framework overview, right? So what we used to implement this is like we have, I'm going to show a demo where like yeah, I have used SpecFlow. SpecFlow is nothing but same Cucumber for .NET framework and we have used .NET Core and then 7 a.m. running on Chrome with uh, Chrome DevTools, okay? So let's go to the demo. So, so this is a BDD uh, test which we have written. This is just to showcase like how you can achieve the same if you face a similar issue, right? So what I have done here is that like, I'm just going, I have just launched Google here, okay? So this is my web page, right? So now, right, so I want, my test is already running just to, just for the sake of time, right? So now what I'm going to do, right? So I'm going to, now my, you can see the screen here, right? So the screen is now going to, change the size to an emulator, right? So the main issue that we had with the customers is that like few of the buttons were not visible and they are not able to proceed further, right? So with uh, implementing this uh, Selenium for Chrome Dev Tools, right? So on the same browser, right? So we were able to do this uh, entire process and our entire flow and still achieve our test uh, coverage, okay? So here, like uh, I'm just doing a small test where we are checking the title of the Web page and also to make sure that if it has a text called Gmail, okay. So this is this this is how we uh, implemented it. And uh, here, one big advantage of using BDD is that like you can just pass the device name, and in the back end, you will be able to pass the uh, sizes of your uh, devices, right? So so that like you can run all the tests parallelly, and we don't need to uh, bother about uh, time taken for our execution, okay. So I'll just uh, do the last slide. So what are the benefits out of that, right? So we were able to test on wide range of screens and devices. And when we started looking for a solution, we were actually looking for mobile emulators. And it was very complex to do that. And uh, we and if we had gone for the mobile emulators, we would have got into a new, creating a new framework and then implement the same. But here, we didn't do any change. It was a small change in our existing framework and everything started working, right? And we are doing parallel execution as well. So uh, this is something that uh, is going to save a lot of time and have good ROA or, on your automation. So yeah, so that's all from my side. Thank you, everyone. And thanks for the Serenium team for such a great tool. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Jindra. Uh, that was fantastic. Uh, I will, uh, and I, I, I think you can share some of the links here in the chat so uh, yeah. even interested yes. I, I do it. I do it. thank you perfect okay i can see bhargav has joined hello guys are you able to see us let me share my screen yes we see two in a box <laughs> yeah. yeah uh thank you uh, everyone uh, first of all thanks for giving us the opportunity uh good morning everyone uh, myself from yusuf from kongsberg digital uh myself and bargo are going to present this in three minutes for sure uh, the topic is how to connect non.NET frameworks to Azure DevOps test plan. Uh, basically, there are a lot of requests in the open source community, uh, Selenium and even non-Selenium, uh, JavaScript, Java, Java, Python. But uh, this request has not been 
addressed out of the box it's not even today available out of the box so we tried our part and tried to just share this solution to the community uh, so this is just a quick overview of the solution where you have the full stack automation is available in the form of test cases in azure devops api ui mobile whatever cloud related so this thing is we run let's say uh, selenium java and then we run we generate the lu reports we have created on intermediate .NET project because that's what natively supported in Azure DevOps. Now we are reading this LU reports metadata, uh, required data uh, for integration with Azure DevOps test plan using this .NET intermediate project. Then we are linking the test cases with the test written in .NET intermediate project to the Azure DevOps test case OK item. Then we run the test and get the results updated in real time there in the Azure DevOps test plan. That's it on uh, the solution part. Now Bargo will take yeah, you to the Let me show you part. a quick uh, uh, thing how it works. So I have a Selenium example, Selenium Java project, which uh, has the Allure reports. After the execution, so I get the suits.json. So if I clearly explore the suits.json, which will have the high level of my test case names, and then it's a highlighted status and a UID for every test case. Now I take the UID and go back to the test cases folder in the Allure reports and explore what exactly happened with my test cases. Like if something has failed, I see the status trace and everything has been captured automatically by the Allure reports. Now here where our idea came into picture. So we take that Allure reports and build this intermediate project in the .NET solution, which reads from your test reports after the execution. And we just have these abstract methods at every test case. And then we just do the assert dot assert equal for every test case name. And then when there is a failure, it will also upgrade, up, uh, read and upload the exact stack trace over there. So now after that, there is a process of connecting your upset this abstract methods from the Visual Studio to your Azure test plan. It's in the Microsoft documentation. We'll leave the links. And once you connect it uh, like that, so it's like a dot, .NET based project. And you just like uh, run from your test plan by using the automated test suits. So we already have the pipelines that are built for the people to give as an examples. And you just select your pipeline and run it. So what this does in the backend is it thinks like we are running the .NET based solution and it will give us the results back. So when something fails, you will also exactly see the error stack trace that is being generated in the Allure reports. So we are just mimicking the dotnet based project as like to integrate with the non dotnet based solutions like selenium with java protractor webdriver io playwright or rest assured whatever it is if you are using allure reports then the uh, middle project that we have built in the dotnet is for you actually so for more details you can either contact us via linkedin or we will share you the sample project uh, link as well in the q and a session that's all go to you naresh Perfect. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I think uh, personally, I've uh, you know used uh, you know Azure DevOps, and I do know that there's a lot of challenge. Uh, so this could be quite handy for people. Uh, so please do share the link in the chat once you're done, uh, so that people can get access. I think there are a couple of questions uh, uh, for you. There is one question from Sudhindra, uh, who's asking, does this uh, support only uh, lower projects? Uh, reports, lower sorry, reports. Reports. Yeah, for now, our solution is like in the Allure reports, we see it's very straightforward to read from the Allure reports and update in the solution. But if people are interested and if we can get some contributors, we will make it available for every kind of reports, actually for extent reports or any other reports. So we'll just uh, make it as a full-blown solution. And we're also looking for some contributors too. Just to Right now, they started with LU, but uh, we can generalize it to use just fine JSON, wherein the, we can actually the LU part. The details, record details will be made available in JSON and we can integrate using that. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Thanks. I'll quickly take one last question, which is uh, from Vishnu. Uh, he's asking Can we attach uh, screenshots in the test results? Uh, we are having that in our pipeline, actually. So we will be developing that functionalities as well in a month, actually, that we can hope we will build that uh, as well. So we read the screenshots from Allure reports and attach it. So, so far, we're only attaching the stack trace, but not the screenshots. But we have the plans to develop this uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the next, uh, actually. Awesome. All right. Thanks, uh, Bhargav and Yusuf. Uh, it was a great presentation. Uh, and please do share the Thank link. You. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to move to the next person. So I think uh, the next person on my list was uh, Bhuvan. Uh, I think uh, we'll come back to Bhuvan. 
Hi guys, thanks for this opportunity. Quick introduction. I am Bhavan Kapoor, working as a lead QA engineer at GoTo Financial. I will walk you through the low maintenance contact contract testing approach. It is more of a quality delivery related process rather than a demo. So coming to integration test versus contract test. During integration test, we end up testing the integrity of the system from a functional perspective. Whereas in contract test, it is usually the interaction between the services that is under the test. We have to make sure that it adheres to all the basic set of uh, expectations that you have set for these contracts. Uh, what you need to make sure in this approach is that the services are loosely coupled and these are independently deployable as well. Uh, when it comes to the advantages, uh, the advantages that we have over the usual integration test is it is language agnostic where abstraction can be written at in any language. It is also environment agnostic. Uh, it is easier to maintain with the uh, multiple API documentation integration that you have available in the market. It is faster testing method for independent services uh, when it comes to low hanging fruit where you might just have optimizations on top of certain set of releases. Uh, how do we go about it? So development can follow a contract first approach, although it is not mandatory. It's just that the contracts are available easily. You can also follow a service oriented design as well. Once you have contracts available in JSON or YML, what you can do is you can uh, use a generator or you can independently create a documentation which might help you out in testing. We basically perform a JSON schema level validation along with basic uh, assertions on top of uh, the contracts. So uh, there are multiple tools which are available in the market around API specifications, documentations, as well as the contract validation in multiple languages and multiple libraries. So this is how it goes about at the abstraction layer. You create producer or the consumer contracts. You create an abstraction layer for the sending logic bit uh, for the APIs. And once you send the request to the service, try to store the response that you get back and uh, the code for the basic assertion set. Then you validate the schema and your expected set of uh, uh, validation. And once you have collated the result, what you can do is you can move towards the CD side and depending on the result, uh, you can either push and deploy it or uh, you can send an error message uh, as a webhook to your uh, services. Uh, around the service testing flow, uh, over, over here what we have is we have a single producer service uh, which has multiple consumer service. These consumers can be anything. It can be multiple set of microservices or it can be a consumer client as well. It can be a front end. Uh, it can also be dependent on another consumer service. In this case, the producer would become a consumer. But let's uh, for simplicity, imagine if there are two consumers which are consuming from it. And you had a minor set of optimizations where you would not want to test the entire uh, regression flow or the sanity flow. What you can do is you can run the contracts for the same. Once these have passed, you can initiate the delivery process. Or if something would have failed, you can just send the error message back. Uh, let's say if there are two services which are being changed around the minor optimization bit of it, then you can run the contract for both this, produ uh, this producer service as well as this consumer service, which is dependent on this producer. And then once all the tests would have passed and the contracts have uh, validated, you can just initiate the delivery process. So this is the approach that we are currently trying to embrace in the commerce enablement vertical for the go-to for low hanging releases as of this point of time. Uh, so uh, I do have other set of documentations prepared, but I had to keep it restricted for three minutes. So I'm reachable at these places. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, over to you, Naresh. Okay, great. Thanks, Bhuvan. Uh, that was a good, uh, quick overview of the contract testing tool that you have. Uh, is this uh, thing that you've built uh, uh, open source? Is it available online somewhere? No, it isn't open source as of this point of time. We are working towards dockerizing and open sourcing this entire thing. Cool, cool. Okay, awesome. Uh, in fact, uh, anyone who's interested, uh, there's also today a workshop, uh, a 90 minute workshop on contract testing, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, if uh, anyone's interested in this topic, just uh, thought I'll highlight that. Uh, I, is there any questions? I don't see any questions as of now. Cool. I think we're a little short of time, so we will move ahead. Thanks again, Bhuvan. This is a great demo. Uh, and uh, kind of explaining the concept of the difference between contract testing and integration testing. So thanks again. Uh, next up is Preeti, thank all you. the way from Singapore. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks, uh, Naresh.
So hello all, uh, very good morning. I am Preeti working as a lead QA at Property Guru Singapore. Uh, Property Guru is located in different parts of the world, including India. So, so just feel free to scan the QR code for any interesting and uh, wonderful opportunities if you guys are interested. Let me just move on. Uh, my talk today is about reducing execution time of mobile UI functional tasks. There are many ways to achieve that and I have chosen one of them, which is using deep links. So let me begin with the situation now. So I'm sure whoever works uh, in the test automation of mobile applications, this situation might, might sound similar to them. One of the hapless realities of mobile uh, test automation is the speed limit. Tap takes time, keystroke takes time, and waiting for animation. And if there are any uh, data to be uh, loaded from the network, again, further increases the time. So making the mobile UI functional tasks faster and as closer to real life as possible is a real challenge. So let me put up the problem here. So I have taken a mobile application where uh, there is a home screen on tapping the search. It gives the search result screen and tapping any of the listing here. It takes to the detail screen. So tests in this detail screen relies on the same starting point. Then it becomes a, a big problem because it has to go through the home screen followed by the search and then uh, the, the detail screen where the actual test begins. OK, so let me come up with the uh, solution which I have chosen today, which is uh, deep linking. So uh, you all know that as most of you know that the deep links are the special URLs uh, that can be associated with specific applications. The developer of the app registers a unique URL scheme with the OS and from then an app will come alive and will be able to do whatever it wants based on the content of the URL. So uh, to reduce the test execution time, this is a sample uh, implementation given by my developer. So he has added a switch case and for each of the screen which the test automation requires and requests for he has added a case here so let me move on to the automation side so i just added a comparison of how a feature file or a spec file would look like without the deep link and with the deep link so without the deep link there are three steps requires and with the deep link it's just a single step and thanks to the appm with just a single line of code we can just open the url which is the deep link customized url uh, and i have uh, used webdriver io framework here so for which i have given the command browser.url but if you're using a direct appm integration it would be driver.get so moving on i've just added a simple demo of how the test would look like with deep link here so it just goes straight to the uh, detail screen but without deep link, it's going to uh, through the home screen search and then the uh, detail screen. So as you can see here, a rough calculation of like if it takes 10 to 15 seconds, then if you're adding around 50 task suites in the regression flow, then like uh, I have already saved like approximately 13 minutes of execution time here. So I'll just conclude my uh, presentation here. Like apart from the test execution time saving there are some quick wins as well like avoid the flakiness like if you repeatedly go through the home screen and the search screen for example so there are uh, like you are exposing potential flakiness which could eventually make the test fail and also if there are any onboarding prompt or alert messages you can directly skip it because you are already bypassing the screen so uh, that's it with my presentation thanks for the wonderful opportunity selenium conf team so feel free to ask any questions if you have and thanks again Great, thanks Preeti. I think this is quite useful. Uh, we do have one question. Uh, so Nick is asking, I guess this is only possible for hybrid apps such as uh, Corvada based uh, apps uh, instead uh, native iOS apps, uh, please confirm. Okay, so uh, hybrid or for others native as well, basically. Is the I question. mean, it applies to all the apps because even the demo which I have put in is a complete native application. So it applies to the native application supporting both iOS as well as Android. And we do have React native application, which also uh, use deep link. Cool. Uh, just take one more question here. Uh, not sure if this was discussed, but can we bypass a login scenario? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can bypass the login scenario if the application supports. In fact, we have a B2B application which uh, which includes authentication in every request. So we have worked with the developer to come up with a customized URL, adding the auth token as well. But just to remind, uh, like deep links, you have to use it with caution because you can't apply the same, uh, you know, bypass in the production app as well. So make sure you, you're adding it in the debug uh, configuration or the automation build configuration. Perfect. I think Ishan has one last question, which I think you answered. Uh, he's, he's asking, is it possible for iOS apps as well? Yeah, absolutely. Because the demo I have put in also uh, applies to iOS app as well, and we are using it. 
Perfect. I think, uh, yeah, again, Preeti, if you have any uh, links to share, you can put it on the chat. Uh, folks will uh, reach out to you. Uh, so I'm going to just take this opportunity to quickly uh, kind of, uh, I think we have 10 minutes left. So we're going to quickly go through and uh, some of the important points uh, from yesterday. So I, I do see a lot of people are rating the session. So first of all, thank you for uh, doing that uh, religiously. Uh, it's greatly helpful and we appreciate that. Uh, so, you know, please continue to do that today as well but, uh, to rate the session. So it allows us to get the feedback. Um, as you might know, the videos, uh, we, a lot of people were asking again about the videos, uh, video recording, because we're not able to attend parallel sessions. Uh, so a lot of the video recordings, uh, in fact, if I'm not wrong, I think oh, uh, 14 videos are already live uh, from yesterday and more will be coming in the, in the days to come. Uh, let me also share my screen just so that people can see that. Uh, so th this is uh, about the videos that I was talking about. So, uh, you know, you can go to YouTube convention, you will uh, see the videos. In fact, a lot of videos from yesterday are already uploaded. Uh, so hopefully that should be there. I talked about reading the session. So thank you for doing that. Uh, do want to thank again all the wonderful speakers uh, that are at the conference. Um, we see a lot of people are uh, watching the tables, but not really joining the tables. Uh, you know, it, it'd be good if uh, you can join the table and have conversations with the speakers. It's a great opportunity to network with the speakers and other attendees. So do leverage this, uh, you know, I want to quickly jump ahead. Uh, I do see uh, people using Mingle, but I think uh, there's a, quite a few uh, people who are saying I'm not getting any response back. <laughs> so, you know, please do check your Mingle to see if someone's pinging you and do respond. Uh, how many people use the law of two feet? Uh, can, I, uh, can I have a quick show of hands? How many people use the law of two feet? Okay, okay. I see quite a few people. So that's that's good. Uh, hopefully this is uh, a good uh, use of your time in terms of making sure you find the right uh, session for yourself uh, and uh, leverage that. Uh, I, I know a lot of you have visited the booths and stuff like that, but I just wanted to again give a quick reminder that today, uh, you know, end of the day, we will be announcing these winners who will be winning uh, these goodies from the sponsors. Uh, so please do uh, visit their booths uh, and claim these goodies. Uh, a lot of them, I'm just uh, rushing through some of these things. But uh, yeah, I'm sure uh, you've uh, had a look at uh, some of these. And if you've not visited so far, then take the opportunity to meet them. Uh, again, I want to thank the program committee for doing a wonderful job uh, in, in putting this program together and the volunteers who are uh, working to make sure that this conference is running smooth and uh, seamlessly uh, and the convention team that has actually built the platform and helped uh, put this together. Uh, so with that, I think I will quickly stop. I just wanted to highlight some of these things. Uh, are there any open questions that you have that have not been addressed so far? Uh, you know, if you can just please uh, ask them, I'll try and address them. We have another five minutes. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed the lightning talks. I thought uh, they, they were... Uh, good comments in the chat at least uh, positive comments so i hope you guys like the lightning uh, talk format is like short crisp three to four minute talks we were able to cover seven of them today uh, and i thought there were some of them were uh, very interesting from different different perspectives so hopefully you guys felt the same Okay, if there are no more questions, that's a good news, uh, which means uh, everything is clear uh, and everyone knows uh, what to expect. So thanks again. We will see you in the evening again when we uh, meet all the, not all, but a subset of all the committers. Uh, we will have a panel for the committers and we will see all of you again in the evening with the committers. Uh, so thanks again and everyone have a good day and uh, see you shortly. Bye-bye.